Hi guys, thanks for watching me. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Thanks for viewing. Now I hope that you've just watched my video that was called How Heaven and the Universal Laws Work. That one led a very open-ended question because I talk about the rule that was missing from the book The Secret. Now, as much as I love Rhonda Byrne and I love that she got this book out there of teaching us how to be more spiritual, I believe in my personal opinion, because that's all it is, is that she left out a very important rule. So I'm going to explain it today with an example. So if you haven't watched the other video, it explains the 12 universal laws and how we must use them all together. We can't just use the law of attraction by itself. Okay, so go back and watch that video. I've just posted it, okay? So let's go back to my book, <clears throat> Five Years in Heaven, The Teachings of Heaven. Okay, the first part of the book is my near-death experience, where I went, what I saw, etc. Right, five years I was up there, and look how thick it is, okay? So when I go into the teachings of heaven, everything I learnt while I was there, it became very clear to me on how to make all the universal laws, including the law of attraction, really work, okay? So let's have a little look at the law of attraction again, which I've got here as chapter 2, page 230, 233 in my book. Okay, if you do want a copy of my book to teach you all how to be a better person and how what heaven's like and my personal experience up there, this book is available on Lulu, Amazon and some other places. So if you Google my name, it'll come up and you can get it as a hard copy or a, or a paperback. Okay, I, I mean a PDF version that they email out to you. All right, so in the universal laws, I look at number seven. Okay, universal law seven, the law of attraction. We all possess the ability um, of how to create the things, events, people that come into our lives. Okay, Our thoughts, feelings, words and actions create energy which in turn creates and attracts similar energies. Okay, So it's the law of attraction. So if we're putting out all this energy that we want more work, more money, a better car, a better house, better this, better that. Okay we can do this we create it through just thinking about it which is our i am's okay so go back and read um, have a look at the video i've just posted part one where i explain this okay so today i'm going to do an example which i'm going to show you because when we see something we believe it okay and it's in my book how to make this all really work okay so in the book the secret they mentioned three rules trust ask receive now i have a big issue with that personally okay let me explain trust that's a given okay we all can trust something is going to happen okay we believe it we can create it so it manifests and becomes our reality okay we can all ask for what we want okay thoroughly believe in the i am's i am skinny i am um wealthy i am rich i am beautiful i am kind loving forgiving etc right we can all do our daily affirmations which is all what i agree with with what Rhonda Byrne said in her book okay it's beautiful words that she wrote okay we all have the capacity to receive those things that we want, okay? It's all there. So I 100% believe in what she says. However, in my personal opinion, I've got to go there. Because when I was in heaven, I learned this. And it's all in my book if you want to go get yourself a copy, okay? So I have four rules. Four rules, okay? So they start on page 237, rules. Rule one is trust and believe. We want it, we make it a believable faction of what we can create in our mind that then becomes our reality, okay? Number two, the rule that she missed is how to release the negativity. 
So let me go into an example. <clears throat> it's in my book. You can all learn this, okay? I have an example in my book, and it's called How Full Is Your Cup? So what I've done is I've put some red cordial in a cup. So I'm going to hold it over here, okay? And the exercise is called How Full Is Your Cup? How full is this cup? I've filled it with some red liquid, okay? So we can identify that there's water, okay? How full is this cup? Now, some of you would say, oh, it's a little bit over halfway. Some of you would say, oh, it's nearly half empty. Some of you might say, oh, well, let's get really fractional here. It's maybe um, six tenths full or whatever. You're all wrong. You're all wrong. Because this cup is already 100% full. That's right. It's full. In, with our eyes, we can only see the red liquid but law of physics and air and water fire and what's the other one earth it dictates that in this top area it's full of air air fills the cup okay so when we go into this thinking mode of how full is my cup let's imagine now all this red liquid is all the goodness that I hold within and I want more through the law of attraction, okay? I want a more better car. I want a more better house. I want more better clothing, a better boyfriend, a better job or whatever, better health, okay? Because these are all things that we can manifest and create into our own lives. So if we want more of this red stuff, what have we got to do? We've got to get rid of the air, so if I pour more red into the top here, we're releasing all that air, all that negativity, so we get more positivity into our lives. And I believe that is the lesson that Rhonda Byrne forgot in her book, because it's such a doozy. When we have to self-analyze ourselves and we say, what am I doing that I no longer want to do? It is a doozy. So let's start there with a couple of things that we can stop doing to create more positive energy that then attracts through that law of attraction. Okay. How do we attract in more good? Let's start there with something basic. Gossiping and being sarcastic. Both are very negative behaviors the more we gossip and the more that we're sarcastic we're creating negative energy so imagine what this is doing to our cup if this is all our sarcasm and our gossiping we're actually depleting this we're pushing that water out of the cup so it spills and more air is getting into the cup so basically what I do in my book is I go through all these exercises on how to get rid of all the negativity in our lives and how do we know what is negative unless someone tells us that we're doing it okay so that's where we have to psychoanalyze ourselves and it is a doozy and that's why all these people that do the law of attraction work they don't tell you how to do this because it's pure psychology when we sit there now let's just go there I had a troll I mentioned him in my first video part one he creates all this drama he's commenting and he's posting videos where he's talking all this negativity so he's attracting all that stuff in so imagine how much red stuff's left in his cup not very much he's the one that was creating all this I did nothing I sat back and I allowed him to do what he did because karma will ultimately judge and push out a punishment on him okay which I spoke about in the laws that I spoke about in my previous video so please go and watch that one okay so in my rules trust and believe that's 
what a lot of people say. We've got to trust that this is going to happen. Number two, we must get rid of all our negativity because then when we're sitting here in this positive, loving space, rule number three can come in, which is ask. Ask. Simply ask. Hey, you know what? I want a better car. I love a better job. I want a better bar partner. I want to get a pet that's really on the same wavelength as me and it's going to be compatible in my lifestyle. I want, I want, I want. Okay? We create it through that positivity that we're creating. Okay? So rule three is ask. Rule four is receive. So why don't people receive what they're asking for? And that comes down to the three warnings that I talk about in my book. The three warnings. Three warnings do exist why the law of attraction never works. First one, we must be specific. Okay? Be specific. Gosh. I had a friend here one day and we said, we want $10 million. So we did this little chant i have 10 million dollars right now in my bank account because we make it now okay i spoke about this in my first video we create it now i am very next morning i got this email it says hello i am a prince from zambia or wherever it is please know you're in the will and we're going to give you ten million dollars. Ha! I got what I asked for. See what I mean? I was asking for ten million dollars and I got a spam email. Thank you for having a sense of humour. I tell you, they give us what we want. So be specific. I go through how to be specific. Okay? Re warning number two. We've got to remember that we all have a life contract. We all have signed up for what will happen from our birth to our death. And even if we die in between and come back like I did in 2001. Okay? So be aware that if our life contract is to, say, show generosity to others, they're not going to make us a rich person, are they? Because our generosity does not come from just handing out what we've already got. It's going to make us appreciate the value of that lesson. Okay, we're going to appreciate the value of being generous when we have nothing of our own to give. And what about in the flip side, where we may be a homeless person, so we have to value that generosity when someone gives us a dollar. Okay, so remember, it's in our life contract. So we can't change that. Well, there are some clauses in our life contracts, okay? We can change it, okay? But we've got to remember of what was already said before we were born. The last one is you get what you wish for. I'll tell you a little story. About 10 years ago, I was had a bubble bath, got the beautiful little scented candles going. I said, I want a boyfriend. I said, make him look like Bon Jovi, because <laughs> I've always liked John Bon Jovi. Yeah, okay, don't know visuals, Linda. Um, so I was lying in the tub and I said, I want a boyfriend that looks like Bon Jovi, but make him a bad boy. Boy, did I get what I asked for. He certainly did like John, he did look, look like John Bon Jovi, but he was a very nasty person. A bad boy is a high understatement, okay? So we've got to remember what we ask for, okay? So then I go into the exercise of how full is your cup. I explain this in detail, okay, how to make it. And I've got a little saying here, and it says, in order to receive, we must first release. Release all the negativity. Release the drama. What do we create in others, okay? All right? So I go through it all. I tell you about like attracting like, how to attract in good energies, how we attract in negative energies, 
Why does a victim always attract a narcissist? Have you noticed that? Narcissists will always get involved with people who are victims. People who have no self-worth. I'm just surmising here, okay? So if this triggered you, please know. There's an extreme spectre here, okay? All right? I don't mean to offend anybody, okay? But a narcissistic person will always get somebody who they can control. You can't tell me that's not right because it's pure psychology, okay? It's very true. So I go through like a track like. I talk about all our negative negatives and behaviors, negative emotions and behaviors. Okay, I've got them all listed here. One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Okay? How do you know that, you know, look at the list of all the behaviours that I've got in there. I've even said things about drama queens, victims, princesses, being obsessive, abs uh, being obsessive, no hopers, centre of attentioners, living above your meaners, the nagging bee itch, and abusers and manipulators. I talk about them. How to change negativity into a positive okay getting through all this to make the law of attraction really work but in my first video guys you've got to go and watch it if you haven't seen it we cannot use the law of attraction unless we use all 12 laws together okay so the question of today is how full is your cup how much red liquid is in your glass and what are you willing to let go of in order to achieve more? That's the doozy that a lot of other law of attraction formulas and techniques leave out because it is so hard when we psychoanalyze ourselves. We blame other people for what happens that we created originally. Look at my troll. He was out there doing some really bad stuff to people. And then he blames us for what he himself has created. So, if my troll's watching today, I hope you are. I nearly said his name. Please learn something on how to be a better person. Let go of grudges. Let go of all your issues, past traumas. Let go of how offended you are by the actions of others. Allow and just show compassion for we don't know what they've been through in their existence. Don't ask why. Why did that person run a red? Why did that guy kill a child? Why did that guy do all those acts and the police let him go? Don't ask why things happen because ultimately karma through the 12 laws of the universe they come back for there is karma and ultimately it's not for us to judge anybody for what they've done for we judge ourselves through our life review that is inevitable you can't escape it so we can start correcting that energetic alignment of our soul why do you think my channel is called Solistic Alignment? So we look internally, correct all this ripple of energy that we create. So when we go home, it's an extremely, extremely happy event to do our life review. And just remember, no one else does our life review. It's only us. Okay? No one else is there. I've read thousands of near, um, near death experience reports when people do their life reviews there's no one there witnessing there's no one there judging only the big three that I stood in front of because there, there they are the cover of my book five years in heaven the teachings of heaven so if you do want a copy it's on Lulu look how thick it is okay the description is below if you do want a copy of it okay I need the world right now that's a big call because it wasn't me that just said that that's straight from her the message from them the angels God ascended masters who now look at my eyes are watering oh my god she's 
giving me a message. The message is for today. The world is in serious hurt. We must start aligning the positive energies. We must start from being within ourselves and psychoanalyze. Get rid of all that pain, hurt, past trauma, past, you know, that girlfriend that you broke up with 10 years ago type thing. Why are you hanging on to all that negativity? Allow it to just go out there to the ether of the universe. Push it out of your cup so we get more of this good stuff in. Okay? Because the world needs this right now. The world needs love. And the more we emit it from ourselves, the more it inflicts to others. And that ripple effect that I talk about in my book can occur. And I call that the magic of the universe. So there you go, guys. I hope that explains a little bit more about part one. Okay? And the missing link as to what I feel that other law of attraction techniques left out. Because it is a doozy when we look within. And we look at why we've done things in our past and how to correct that in our solistic alignment to be better people in our future. But that is all I wish for everybody. Have a good day, guys, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye. To learn more about your solistic alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.